What is beta and how is it used to value a company? Beta is a measure of the covariance between the rate of return on a company stock and the overall market return. Now the best way to understand what beta is, is to first understand what risk is. Risk can be divided into two segments, systematic and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk refers to the market risk, you know, market-wide that affects all companies, whereas unsystematic risk or company-specific risk is something that affects only one company. Maybe it's an internal issue or it's the underperformance or it's a random event that only impacts that one company. So those are the two segments of risk. What beta captures is the systematic risk of a company relative to the market. Now, modern portfolio theory states and assumes that through diversification, you can actually eliminate unsystematic risk. Because if you hold a thousand equities, if one company does experience, you know, some random uh, event that really impacts only them, the net impact on your overall portfolio is pr very limited and probably will not be reflected. Right, So you can really diversify away on systematic risk, where a systematic risk, if there is a nationwide crisis or you know, the price of oil spikes instantaneously or something like that, that will impact all of those companies. So, so that's systematic and that can't be eliminated. So when we talk about beta, beta is really a measure of risk for that respective company relative to the market. And that risk is systematic risk, not unsystematic. So that's very important to understand. Now the market has a beta of one. So a beta below that means the company has lower systematic risk than the market, while a beta over one means the company has higher systematic risk than the market. Now beta is used in calculating the cost of equity. To calculate the cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model, the KPIM model, and the higher the beta value, the riskier the company and the higher the cost of equity is to compensate shareholders for this increased risk. So the KPM formula is right over here. We have the risk-free rate, RF, plus the beta times the market risk premium, the difference between the expected market return and the risk-free rate. Now really in this formula, the expected uh, or the risk-free rate is the lower threshold, the rate of return that all investors can expect if they were to invest in a risk-free asset. And so as the risk for that respective company increases, the overall return on equity, the, 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 the net result of this formula, increases. So if your risk increases, then what happens is the cost of equity increases to compensate for that, which makes sense. So a follow-up question, why do we unlever and lever beta. So with beta, when you look at Google Finance and you look at the beta of that respective company, it captures the risk for that respective company, not only based on systematic risk, but based on the capital structure of that company and any really kind of extreme events that cap that were captured during that year. So that beta measure is biased to get really a unbiased beta measure to really truly capture only the systematic risk to be confident and be able to defend that you actually have to unlever that beta and make some calculations and assumptions and look at a peer group and average that out before you can really actually assume that this beta measure is going to capture systematic risk. So the beta value that you see on Google Finance is actually biased and not the right beta value that will capture the systematic risk that faces that respective target. So let's go into really understanding why we do this, okay? So when calculating the cost of equity, the KPM formula requires a beta value that captures the systematic risk for the respective company. This is not company specific, but rather industry wide. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in order for KPM to provide an accurate estimate, beta must accurately capture the systematic risk of the company's peer group, its industry. 
So rather than you know making a biased beta value that's I influenced by the day-to-day -day per performance of the stock price, to really capture the overall net exposure of that company based in its industry to the overall market, you want to get a pure beta. Now the beta val value found on Google Finance is considered levered and biased because it reflects the influence of the target company's capital structure and its own performance. That beta is not systematic. So this is why you take the target company's beta, you unlever it to remove the capital structure influence, and then find an industry average using the unlevered beta of, of the company's peers. By taking the peer group average, so you, find, you look at your target company and you choose uh, additional companies that operate in similar industries or in the, sim in the same market, and you take the average of their unlevered betas, and then you take that beta, and by taking the peer group average, the analyst can confidently project and defend that this is the unlevered industry beta, which captures only systematic industry-wide risk. Once the average is calculated, you can lever it back to the target company's capital structure to get an accurate beta that is relevant to the company's capital structure, but captures the industry systematic risk. So you will you strip away the capital structure impact and then you apply it back, but the underlying beta, the unlevered beta of the respective company may, may, is still influenced by the performance of that company. So really to get a pure industry beta, you want to calculate an average based on a peer group of similar companies. The moment you do that, you can then confidently say that this is the systematic industry-wide risk measure, the beta measure. Okay. Now, how do you unlever and lever that beta measure? Well, to unlever a, a beta, you take the levered, levered beta, and then you divide by one plus the tax-affected debt-to-equity ratio. To lever the beta, so go put it back and apply the capital structure, you multiply the unlevered beta by one plus the tax-affected debt-to-equity ratio. So our denominator, in, when we are unlevering the beta, is the same that we, we use to multiply the uh, the unlevered beta, beta by to get the le levered beta, and so that's the the if you know one formula you know the other so it's relatively simple to understand so this is more just memorization than anything else. Now a more difficult follow up question but something that's really important is what is the difference between the bottom up and top down approach when calculating beta? Well, there are two common ways you can calculate beta. The top down approach is more well known. We already covered it. This is what we talked about before with taking that average, right? You take the beta reported for the overall company, unlever it, and then average it among the company's competitors and its peer group, and then lever and then apply the capital the company's capital structure back to lever it up, and that is the beta that you use. The problem with this approach centers on the companies you are comparing your target to, and thus taking an average of. Similar to a comparable company's analysis or a precedent transactions analysis, the peer group, the universe of companies that you're using your company to compare it to is very important. That selection process will define whether your, your, your analysis is correct or not. And it's the same here. Now, the question is, are there truly comparable companies if your target company operates in three different markets? Say, for example, it has operations in the TV space, in the mining space, and in the food business. If you unlever the beta and then you compare it to uh, food uh, distributors, well, is that really a good comparison to make? Because it still has exposure to the TV market and the mining industry. Right. So for highly diversified companies going top down and just taking the overall beta and comparing it to one certain group has a weakness, which really it makes it very difficult to defend your assumptions. Right. So the response is the bottom up approach, which works from the base of the organization and calculates the beta for each division. By breaking down a company into the key industries it operates in, you have a better chance of capturing each asset's systematic risk based on comparable pure plays. Once you have found the betas for each division, you can take the weighted average based on revenues or profits to calculate the overall organization's beta. Then apply the capital structure and lever up the measure to get the, the, the beta value that you will use in your capital asset pricing model. 
So for our respective company that was operating in the TV, mining, and food business, from the bottom-up approach, what you do is you break down each of those businesses. So you split them up and you focus, okay, we're going to conduct a peer group analysis of comparable TV uh, competitors. And we're going to go and we're going to look at mining companies that have similar operations to our mining division. And we're going to look at uh, food companies that have similar operations to our food division. And then we take the average, the unlevered average of both of, uh, of all three of those. And then based on really the weighting of revenues or profits, if, you know, the mining group makes the most revenues and the, uh, the, uh, the TV division makes the least, then, you know, you really want to make sure that that impact is shown. So then you calculate the weighted average of those three betas to get the company's overall unlevered beta. And then you apply the company's capital structure to lever it up, and that's the beta that you use in your capital asset pricing model. So this is very important, especially for more advanced analysis when you really have to defend your assumptions in an inter interview scenario.